So let's talk about it. Let's bring in Richard Goldberg. He served as the director for countering Iranian weapons of mass destruction for the White House National Security Council, and he joins us now. Richard, take it away. Um, I, I think so often when people are referring to Hamas and its leaders, as well as the folks that are, are, are doing all these misdeeds, they think they aren't smart, but they are. Tell us how. Well, absolutely. They've played us like a fiddle for years, uh, making us believe that if you just allowed certain countries to fund them uh, and they took responsibility for the Gaza Strip, they would somehow moderate themselves. And so they have shell companies like you talked about. They have banking relationships in certain areas. Uh, and they have key financial sponsors. We all talk about Iran. That's very important. And we should be locking down all the money being made available to Iran. But what about the Qataris? We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars per year pouring into the Gaza Strip to subsidize Hamas from the Qataris. The United Nations, all the money that we've talked about, it's in the news now because Biden just said he's going to give another $100 million. 38% of the money we give to the UN for the Palestinian refugees goes into the Gaza Strip. That's $380 million into Hamas's hands since Biden took office. So what we need to be doing is locking down all of that money the sanctions you just referenced that the Biden administration just rolled out yesterday, it's a shot across the bow. But if we're going to get really tough and squeeze Hamas to force the, the release of all the hostages, we need to really go at the Qataris and the Turks, who not only sponsor Hamas, but host Hamas leaders in their countries. And by the way, those leaders should be legitimate military targets, so long as Americans are being held hostage. It's so true. Talk about the investment portfolios of Hamas, because I think that's, and we alluded to it earlier during our wall walk, that's where a lot of the money is. Of course, they impose a lot of taxes, but they're also making a profit off of these investment portfolios in Saudi Arabia and Turkey. So a lot of the, pre, uh, the preventative measures as it relates to peace is the money that's coming across that they're doing business with other countries. Yeah, what's outrageous is that we have encouraged this to happen. It was a policy, both from the United States and from Israel, sadly, and that has backfired. The Israelis now understand that. It's not really resonating in Washington that, that that's a bad strategy. It doesn't make sense to me. The New York Times reporting overnight that we're now in a full-blown hostage negotiation through the Qataris, their financial sponsor, to try to beg, plead, will you release the hostages? We need to get tough with the Qataris. We need to say we're going to shut down Qatar Airways from coming into the United States. Get tough with the Turks. Turkish Airlines isn't allowed in here either. The Qatari Investment Authority, massive amounts of money flowing around the United States. We could threaten to freeze those assets. And again, Ismail Haniya, the leader of Hamas, Al Noon, the deputy in Turkey, mm -hmm. others in Qatar, why are they walking the earth right now freely? We should be saying these are legitimate military targets until all Americans and all hostages are freed. I, I think you nail it because in, we're funding terrorism by allowing this to happen. Where does the money come from? Well, we just showed you. Uh, Richard, thanks so much. Thanks for having me. You got it. So coming up, Ray Durell.